Hi everybody, my name is Ashley Darbone and I am a registered nurse here at Cardin Children's Medical Center in the Pediatric Emergency Department. I currently work as a staff nurse as well as a relief charge nurse in our department and I have noticed that there is a decrease in the effect of communication among all departments in our facility. Poor communication can impact every single one of us. It can lead to poor patient outcomes, medical errors, employee dissatisfaction, and it can even lead to Medicare withholding reimbursement because never events occur or our patient satisfaction scores are low. It is time that we stand together to make a change. We have to remember what our organization stands for. Our mission is to make a difference in people's lives through excellent patient care. Excellent patient care comes from effective communication. Here at Cardin's, there's poor communication among every single one of our fours. Our strategic goal is to improve the communication between departments in order to provide quality and safe care for our patients and their families. This has to be done by changing the culture of our organization. It will take effort from everyone, leaders and employees in every single department. In order to be successful, we will take steps to ensure our plan rolls out effectively. First, leaders from all departments will need to meet to ensure that there are standardized protocols in place. These protocols will help managers and leaders enforce the new behaviors and ensure that everyone is on the same page. We need to ensure every year that employees sign a code of conduct ensuring that they will follow the new communication protocols that are in place and that they will effectively communicate with each other and ensure their own behaviors are acceptable. In addition, these protocols will help managers in dealing with any resistance that occurs and ensuring that everything, every, that everyone is dealing with the resistance in the same way. After we have standardized protocols in place, there will be mandatory education for every employee in every department. Employees, managers, and leaders are going to have to ensure that this education is mandatory and that everyone must attend. In these education seminars, the new expectations will be discussed in detail, and there will be education on things such as team building, open communication, communication skills, phone etiquette, conflict management, and there will be other information in order to help foster better communication. When we first roll out the new protocols after everyone has had proper education, the new plan will start with how departments are giving report to other departments. The new expectation will be that when a receiving nurse gets a call from the delivering nurse for report, they will take that report within 30 minutes. Both staff members will be respectful during the exchange. Ensuring that report is given quickly will ensure that the patient is getting to where they need to go quickly and efficiently. And it will ensure that there's a, a better throughput for every single department in our hospital. When delivering staff member brings the patient to the floor, they will wait until the receiving nurse comes into the room. This will ensure that the receiving nurse can visualize their patient, meet their new patient and the family, and ensure that everything that they were told they were receiving is correct. For instance, the nurse will be able to verify that the correct fluids are hanging or the correct medications are hanging or that the patient isn't sicker than what they thought. This will also allow for them to ask any questions that they may have as well as to for the families and the patients to see who the new nurse will be and to ensure that there's a safe delivery of care. Once all departments are starting the implementation, they will all have their own individualized goals. Every department in our hospital has their own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to communication. These strengths and weaknesses can either help or impede the new protocols coming out. We must ensure that all managers are following the classical model of decision making when they are implementing the new protocols. Everything will be presented to them in a standardized approach with the new standardized protocols that were put into place with all the leaders together. 
The new standardized approaches will ensure that every department is in is enforcing the new information in the same way and not allowing for other departments to interpret the new rules in their own way. This can lead, down, lead to a breakdown of the entire system. The leaders must remain visible during implementation to ensure that they are motivating and influencing and providing real-time feedback. Communication must remain open at all times to ensure that there is honesty. Everyone must be held to personal accountability. If leaders are effective and ensure that they are not allowing their roles to become blended, it can foster increased collaboration as everyone knows that they are being held to the same standards and their concerns are being heard and those not following the new expectations are being held responsible for their actions. Communication must remain open during all stages of implementation. There must be effective downward, upward, and horizontal communication in all stages of this process in order for it to be successful. It is important that leaders remain visible and that even leaders and managers are held to the new standard. How can leaders and managers expect for their employees to follow the new protocols if they themselves are not doing it as well? This can lead to resistance from employees. We must evaluate the process throughout the entire implementation. Leaders should ask everyone that is invested what is going well and what their challenges are. This will allow for real-time adjustments to the process to ensure that change can have the most realistic approach to ensure that it sticks for the long run. We don't want to make these changes for them to be short-lived. Leaders and managers will need to follow a feedback control model during evaluation. This will ensure that, that when staff is not meeting performance standards, they are met with appropriate, pre-decided corrective action. If they are meeting the standards, we want to ensure that they are being encouraged and reinforced. In order to know if we are being successful, specific metrics will be used to measure the success. The first one is that patient satisfaction scores will increase after implementation, specifically on the scores related to communication between employees. We want our patients to see the hard work we are putting in to improving their safety. The second will be that the turnover related to employee dissatisfaction will decrease after implementation. By effectively communicating, employees should feel respected and have better interpersonal relationships with other departments. There should also be improved collaboration and safer handoffs. The third metric that will be used will be that the, the number of errors in patient care related to poor communication will decrease. This goes into the improved patient safety component of our protocol. At this time, I would like to open the floor for anybody that may have any questions that they would like to ask. I would like to thank you for your time and your personal investments to helping us improve communication between departments in order to improve safe, patient safety and overall efficiency. Please email me, call me, or text me if you have any questions or concerns during any part of the implementation process. My information is currently up on the screen, as well as you can search me in the, our organization's email and find my contact information there. Thank you for all your hard work and time, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you.